Welcome back to Fast Money. Chipotle shares surging today. The Sox gains accelerating after yesterday's big earnings report. Shares skyrocketing to a fresh all-time high. Wedbush analyst Nick, Nick Setian joins us now on the Fast Line. He raised his price target by nearly 6% today, saying the stock could hit $2,200 in the next year. Nick, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Aside from costs coming in, what are some of the other levers that you're factoring into the model to get you to 2200 Well, you know, what we saw is the big transaction growth beat. You know, so the comp was a beat, but it was led by transactions. So, uh, you know, the expectation was 1.5% transaction growth in, in, in Q1, uh, similar transaction growth in Q2, and they're talking about 4% transaction growth. And, you know, trends have continued to into April uh, when the fast casual data uh, and along with the full service data in April has fallen off a cliff. So there were a lot of uh, worries that going into April, uh, you know, trends may not have held up. And not only did they, you know, hold up, but uh, you know, there was a big, big transaction led uh, beat. Mm -hmm. So if, if transactions are, are getting big, I mean, who, who are they um, stealing from? Where, where does this increased dollar, where does this extra dollar come from? Yeah, I think there's a big trade down from full service. Uh, and, you know, not only do they talk about, you know, the higher income, you know, cohort uh, is seeing higher frequency from the higher income cohort, but they have talked about a slowdown in the lower income cohort in the second half of 22. And what they said is that that lower income cohort, we, they saw the frequency, you know, go up in Q1 and it's held up in, in you know, so far in April. So, uh, you know, there is a big trade down, you know, going on. I think they're uh, stealing share from, uh, you know, not only independents uh, in the fast casual category and full service, but also uh, some chains. Uh, and also, you know, I, mean, I think, uh, you know, across uh, QSR, with the exception of McDonald's, everyone else is seeing negative transactions as well. So uh, there's some of that shift going on as well. All right, Nick, great to get your take. Thank you. Nick Setian Thank you. of Wedbush. Guy. It's interesting. I mean, I, look. I think it's the right time to take profits in the stock. Traded five, six times normal volume. I love the company. We collectively, it's a name we've liked, but it's, it's run a lot, and it's going to come back down to some semblance of reality. It's happened before. But what's in, remember we had Jim Osmond on the show a couple weeks ago, and he talked about spinoffs. Remember, this was in 06, yeah. I think, a spinoff out of oh. McDonald's, and everybody just sort of discarded. We probably did as well. But there's value in that. I bring it up because J&J is about to do similar. So it's just yeah. something to keep in mind. Yeah. So, so every, they hit on everything. Transactions were up. Transaction prices were up. Uh, margins were up. I think they, they jumped from 20 to 25 percent. And that was on the back of, I think they accredited avocado pricing. Coming went down. down. Yeah. But where, so, so I think, I, I don't know if I would have, I probably, you know, would have sold this stock. I wouldn't have expected it to rally like this. I would have sold it ahead of earnings. But what's the real story? Is it growing the scale? I think opening up new stores. So those are catalysts that are probably still out there. The stock is way too high. I wouldn't dabble in it now, but it's incredible. I mean, to the extent, if you believe that there's a trade down happening uh, across retail, across restaurants, and that's where they're getting their share from, then then why not? Why wouldn't you believe for now? For now. For now. And, yeah. And, and, now. and I think there is, and they talked about it, and they talked about also the frequency of, mm -hmm. of the more affluent uh, diner, um, whatever we're calling the person that walks into CMG guy. What, what do we call I you? I don't know what that means. What do we call you? I don't know. Right, it means so, a, so a human being. <laughs> I don't know. Hungry? <laughs> smart? But, but let's get back to the analysis. So what you hear from the analyst community is they're raising their prices based upon an addressable market size. A lot of them actually base it upon what they think of the percentage of the addressable market they can get. Mm -hmm. And I do think that that addressable market, you have to tell me in this environment where they've been able to raise prices 25% over the last couple of years and other people have priced down. And I, I, I think this is as good as it gets, but I've said this before, I, I've been wrong. Yeah, Karen? Same. <laughs> I, you know, I, I haven't liked it. And it's just always been so expensive, but just the extraordinarily good at, I mean, running an efficient, incredible business with, with huge growth. I, keep, it's, I just feel like it's deja vu all over again. It keeps happening. And Out of yet. Yogi. What? Nice you got to go with Yogi, right? <laughs> and it, and yet, here we are. So I get your question. Is there a lot more to come on this trade down right. trade? Because if you see but, it happening, right. you believe it's happening, and that's why you like Walmart, and that's why you like, you know, right. McDonald's or whatever other restaurant or place you like, then why not here? Well, every once in a while we see they miss, 
and then so they miss whatever the amount of the miss is times the multiple contraction and that becomes a, a big hit but you've been right to stay in it all the way I've missed uh, hundreds hundreds of points.